Hello everyone and welcome back, Das Comics. It is, oh, what is today? Thursday? It is Thursday, March the 9th, and this is my comic haul for New Comic Book Day, March the 8th, which was yesterday. Best day of the week, as always. And yeah, we're going to start today with some back issues. One of them was an eBay buy, and the other three were back issues from my shop. And we'll start with the eBay buy. Just kind of collecting some of the back keys from Star Wars. I picked up Star Wars High Republic Adventures number two from the 2021 series. First appearance of the Nahil leader, Marky and Roe. It's a big book to have. So I wanted to go ahead and grab that one. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Okay, and my shop still had three copies of Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number five from a couple weeks ago. They still had three copies on the shelf. So I picked all three of them up. I figured, hey, if nobody wants them, I'll take them. So three more and I think one of those is going to go into the giveaway bin so I'm going to give one of those away at a future date okay now let's start with independence okay first up we have from Zenoscope Gretel, number one, new series, new ongoing. I picked up from Archie Comics, and this was a $2.99 cover, so I figured why not, and it is a first appearance of a new girl called Jola, or Jyla, Vet, or something like that, in this universe, and the first appearance of this new girl rock band called Rock Candy, so why not, it is a key Will it go anywhere? I don't know, but for two bucks, why not? Okay, Image Comics <clears throat> picked up Stoneheart, number one, and I read this, and I just don't think this one's for me. So, yeah. Image Comics puts out Blood Tree, and this really should have been cover for number one, to be honest. But I'm digging this story. This is a, it's a slow burn it, it looks like it's like a Netflix pitch, pretty much. But I like it. It doesn't, uh, that's not a negative thing. I like the story. I am a story person. I really enjoy good stories that immerse you. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in this video about comics, stories, and immersion. And what can take you right out of a story type of thing. Because there was at least one example. Two examples really this week that really just made me scratch my head and was takes me right out of the story. Okay, and from Dynamite, I have Deja Thoris, and I picked that up for uh, for reasons. I did read it, and it was kind of a medieval type thing. It was okay. Not not the not the greatest. I, the art wasn't very good, but it is what it is. AWA Upshot picked up Black Tape number two, and I've yet to read number one to be honest. And from Dark Horse, I picked up Clear number one from Scott Snyder. I'm looking forward to reading that one. From what I've been hearing about it it's it's another one of those slow burn type things so you really got to be you, you've got to be in a mindset to read a book like that it's, it's a big book i'll get to it but that is not all of my independence i also have this one which i have not read yet but i'm looking forward to reading this one because this has been a really good story from ablaze we have children of the black sun number three yeah, looking forward to reading that guy right there. All right, let's get these out the way. And we're going to talk about my books that I got in the back here. 
I got I got Immortal Hulk number one. I got my two copies, and then just kind of a random Hulk book from the two thousands, number seventy five. Cool cover. Yeah, so I went with Hulk in the back in the backdrop today, and we'll get to why a little bit later. Let's go ahead and move to DC Comics. Okay. You know, I only got a couple books from DC. I picked up The Flash 794. As this is the first costumed, maybe, superhero appearance of um, Ivy West. Irie West. I, yeah, Irie, I think. Irie West. And I picked up Batman 133. This was the first book I read. Every time that this book's out, it's the first one I read. Um, it's an okay story. None of the characters really matter. Maybe Red, Red Mask might come into the regular Earth. You know, I, my prediction for this story arc is Chip Zdarsky wanted to bring back Alfred... And maybe another rogue. So I'm thinking maybe we're going to see Red Mask and Alfred come back into the regular Earth continuity through this arc. Which would be good. I'd like to have Alfred back, you know. So, yeah. That's my two DC books. And Marvel. Lots of Marvel. As always. Okay. I picked up a copy of The Scarlet Witch. Number three. Picked up a copy of Santa Staros number two. I liked number one, so looking forward to reading that one. Um, I picked up Nightcrawlers number two. Now this is the 100 year mark in the Sins of Sinister storyline. And I gotta be honest with you, this one is a tough read. Be there's just so much going on. And it's like they just make it, just write it in plain English. You know, they, they write in code almost and, and, and word things to where you really gotta read it 10 times to discern a meaning from it it's like just make it simple this book is a hard follow and it's hard to stay invested in it throughout the whole story because your mind my mind just wanders wondering what the hell are they saying you know it's kind of a tough read <clears throat> i'm trying to stick with it though because i want to see where this i want to see where this ends up i really do And picked up Avengers 66, which is Jason Aaron's finale. And a lot of people dogging on Jason's Aaron, Jason Aaron's run, but it was actually not a bad run. You know, there's some good stuff there. But I am looking forward to Jed McKay on Avengers and see where he goes with that. Okay. And I picked up Moon Knight, number 21. I'm a few issues behind on this one. I really need to pick back up. Okay. Got Mary Jane Black Cat number four, which, I mean, I've liked that story. I really have. It's been pretty good. Yeah. I picked that one up. I picked up the Timeless Variant. And I think I pre ordered two copies of this, so I'll have three copies of that. And maybe one of those I'll give away. Who knows? Maybe. I am a Felicia fan, so I might end up just keeping it. But I really, that's a really nice cover. But I tell you what, the more, this last year, the more I, I read MJ, the more I dislike her. So, yeah, that and that's one of the things that irked me about this week's Amazing Spider-Man number 21, which I'll get into next because I got that book. Let me get these out of the way. Okay. Put the kitty cat down. And I got 
Amazing Spider-Man 21. Now, I picked up two copies of it. And I'll tell you, I really did enjoy this story. It really made me wanting for the next issue, which is great. It's it's a pretty intriguing story with this Rabin dude, Benjamin Rabin, Rabin, which is kind of a callback from years and years ago. And there was a panel in Amazing Spider-Man 793 where this glowing sun dude did show up in the window, and I remember thinking, what the hell was that, you know? And it's a harken back to that issue. So this is pretty cool. It's got ties, and I'm liking it. The one thing that I did not like about this book, and it immediately kind of threw me out of the story for a second, was, is Peter dating Felicia, or is he not? In what planet, when, a, when something shows up that is threatening, on what planet does a man call his ex before he calls his lady? What reality does that happen, you know? So that, that immediately just kind of made me think, what, what, come on, you know? If Peter is serious in dating Felicia, he's who she, he's going to check in on first, Period. The first thing he does, though, is calls MJ. And after, and especially after Amazing Spider-Man 19 and 20, how MJ just treats Peter at the, the spa and stuff, there's no way. I just That just irritates me. It irks me that, that no guy would do that. You know, so that kind of took me out of it a little bit, but... All in all, it was a good story. I just wish Peter would be serious about Felicia and, and they would write it that way. If they're going to write it that way, then write it. If they're going to be dating, then make them dating, you know? So, yeah, Felicia was nowhere to be found in this. And it's supposedly Peter and Felicia are an item. So who knows? I don't know. But, yeah, they need to, they need to straighten that out. On to the next. I picked up Black Panther, number 15. Okay, um, and I did read this one, and this one ends with T'Challa just with his tail between his legs and starting exile. Where does the next series of Black Panther start? Because if they just wipe everything out, and the next, you know, the next series starts with T'Challa as the king, and everything's cool, and I'm going to be like, wait a second. How do you go from... T'Challa being exiled from Wakanda forever. And then all of a sudden, he's the king again. So I'm interested to see where do they go from here. John Ridley never really tied this one up. This seemed like it needed at least five more issues to give T'Challa a full arc because he never came back. You know, I just, I don't understand that. But I mean, it's like it ended mid-arc. You know, I don't know. It's weird. Where do they go from here? We'll see. Okay, I picked up High Republic Star Wars number six, two copies. Okay. And this one was just a continuation of the story. Nothing really major happened in this one. So, yeah, it was, it, it just, it was a story pusher. This one was. Nothing exciting, really. And here's another one that just totally pulled me right out of the story. And I was enjoying this book. This is X-23, Deadly Regenesis. I like X-23. I like Laura Kenny. I don't like the idea of her being Wolverine, how they push that, because she's not Wolverine. Wolverine had way too big of a following to say we're just going to kill him off and make her Wolverine. It wasn't fair to her. You know, they just did her dirty like that. They didn't advance her as a character. They just said, we're going to drop you and you're Wolverine now. And it just totally killed her character growth, in my opinion. 
That being said, this is a throwback issue. A th a th the story harkens back to the time of Utopia. So it's 2006, 7, 8, 9, and somewhere in that area with the whole Utopia storyline. And I was enjoying it. It was a good story about Laura being heroic. And then they cut to the subplot, which is this faction creating a, a bad person or whatever, you know. And the thing that took me out of the story, remember, I'm talking about immersion. And I don't, I don't mean to offend anyone with my reviews, but I've got to be honest. And i got to tell you, when I do a review, what I really feel about it. This storyline, this this time frame, is the 2000s. And they keep referring to this character as they. In 2008, 2007, nobody cared about pronouns. It wasn't a thing. So you were either a he or you were a she. So they're referring to this person as they, and it just totally took me out of the story. I was in, and I was enjoying this. That happened, and it's like, okay, our activist writer is pushing this in a time that it didn't exist. You know, you want to do that stuff today in in modern books. That's fine. I don't, I I don't have to read that. This is a story that I wanted to read going back in Laura's past, and they put today's politics in the past, and it just took me right out of the story. So that is. That is that. So, and that's all of my books this time. So, yeah, big haul. A lot of good books. I've read about, I'd say I've read about seven or eight books already. A lot of them are good. Some of them not so much. But I wanted to talk about Incredible Hulk. Marvel put some news on their site. And it's about the relaunch of The Incredible Hulk. And it's really super good news. Okay, this little article that Marvel put out is from the new creator that's going to be taking on um, Incredible Hulk in the summer, this, this later this summer. Philip Kennedy Johnson is going to be doing the writing. And this is what he wrote. The work that Al Ewing and Joe Bennett and the rest did with Immortal Hulk was so impactful and spoke so clearly to me personally, it was impossible to come up with an idea that wasn't inspired by it. We're getting back to Stan Lee's Frankenstein, Jekyll and Hyde inspirations for the character and giving readers a proper monster book in its best, truest Hulk tradition. If you loved Immortal Hulk, you, you basically, if you liked the Immortal Hulk, you're going to like this. Now, to me, that's an exciting thing because I want a more grounded Hulk story. Not this space... I mean, kudos to Donnie Cates for trying something different. It just didn't land, you know. Um, so I'm looking forward to a more grounded, incredible Hulk story. And that, to me, is big news. Look out for the Hulk annual that comes out in May. Because it's going to have a a preview of the story that's going to be coming out. I've already got two copies of that pre-ordered through mycomicshop.com. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for today. That's the comic talk. The Incredible Hulk thing is a big deal. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. And everybody will see you on the look ahead on Saturday. Bye for now.